Squealing brakes is one of the most irritating things you can suffer from when out riding mountain bikes, and the squeals can range from ear-piecing shrieks all the way to horrendous howling, and sometimes even vibration you can feel through your hands. So this is everything you need to know about disc brake squealing and how to solve it. So firstly, what causes brake squeal? Usually the culprit tends to be brakes that haven't been bedded in correctly. And the bedding in process itself, the whole point of it is to deposit some pad residue from the pad onto the disc rotor. And if this hasn't been done correctly, you'll get an uneven amount of pad residue on the rotors. And that causes sort of microscopic sort of waves along the disc rotor of which the brake pad itself will vibrate. And that vibration turns into squealing. Now, the other thing that can make your brake squeal is oil contamination. Now, this can happen in a variety of different ways because there's so many different sources of oil on a bike. The most likely one is that the banjo or the cable itself, at the front caliper in particular, could be leaking onto the pistons and the brake pads. So make sure that all of the relevant bolts are tight and you've got no oil leaks and make sure you check up at the brake lever as well because the oil can just travel down the outside of the hose. Same goes for the back, make sure they're always clean and there's no sign of any sort of standing oil. The next one is a bit of an unusual one, but it's actually something that does affect a lot of people and it's handling the disc rotors themselves with your bare hands. Now you could have touched oily stuff on your bike and you transfer it over, or you could just have slightly oily skin. Now that does actually have quite an effect on squealing of brake pads. So the final thing to take into account is if you use any kind of spray lubricant or water displacer on your bike. When you spray that, even like breezy days can transfer that sort of mist all the way towards your disc rotors. Be super vigilant when you're doing this because the tiniest bit of that oil mist can really ruin your brake pads and rotors. So those are obviously the two main candidates for brake squeal, but there is one more and you tend to hear this in bike parks around the world where people are cooking their brakes and they're on the brakes hard all day long. Now that is vibration that's being transmitted through the frame. Now you are seeing on some people's bikes, you're seeing vibration dampers and they help sort of dampen out that vibration so the brakes don't squeal, you don't feel as much of it through the bars. When I was checking out G Atherton's Pro Bike in Whistler earlier this year, he had a little custom brake damper fitted. If you check that out, it's a really cool bit of tech, but you're talking literally a handful of bikes that are gonna suffer from this sort of problem. So there are also a few alternative methods for stopping brake pad squeal. I probably wouldn't do these myself, but up to you if you wanna try these. So a classic is to use copper slip on the back of your brake pads. So this is something that comes from motorbikes and the world of cars, and the pads themselves can vibrate, which causes some kind of squealing. And copper slip, if you put it on the back of the pad, so that's contacting the piston, the tiniest amount, and it just forms a little barrier and helps absorb that sort of motion. So apparently it works really well, but I wouldn't be inclined to put any sort of grease or lubricant anywhere near my disc brake pads. Okay, so two other methods that I certainly wouldn't recommend that apparently work quite well is to soak your brake pads in some sort of alcohol and burn the solution off completely. Um, apparently that gets rid of the residue and no more squeaky brakes. And a blowtorch has also been mentioned as well. Um, you shouldn't really play with fire, you're gonna get burnt, aren't you? So this is how you stop your brake pads squealing. Bear in mind that this is not gonna work for you if your brakes are contaminated with oil. You can obviously try this because it might save you a few quid, but they're never gonna be perfect. So this is for everyone that hasn't bedded their brake pads in properly and you are suffering for some squealing. First up, these are the tools you're gonna need. Nitrile safety gloves, brake cleaner, needle nose pliers, and a block, coarse abrasive paper, lint-free shop towels, Torx T25, 2.5mm Allen key. So first things first, you want to remove your disc rotor off the wheel and you want to remove your brake pads from the bike. So I'm putting my gloves on for this straight away because I don't want any chance of oil from my hands getting onto the brake pads. So I'm just going to need needle nose pliers and a 2.5mm Allen key for these particular brakes. Just want to remove the retaining circlip there. Just set that aside. Use the Allen key just to undo the retaining bolt there. Remove that and then take the pad straight out of the caliper. So using the Torx T25, just undo your disc rotor bolts, remove these, put these aside and remove the rotor from the bike. 
And then the next step is to start cleaning. So with your disc brake rotors and pads removed from the bike, your next step is to clean them. So to do this, you want either isopropyl alcohol or preferably a decent disc brake cleaner. So stuff like this and WD-40 is really good stuff and it really does strip off all of the sort of crap that you don't want on there. The next step is to use a really sort of heavy duty wet and dry paper or emery paper, so that's sandpaper effectively, to give them a good scrubbing and make sure there's none of that horrible stuff left. Now you wanna do the same with the disc rotors. So on the rotors themselves, you can see here, these have been bedded in correctly, but you can see there's a pad residue on that rotor. So if I put a new set of brake pads on this as it is, it would be pretty unlikely they're gonna bite quite as well as the current ones do. So what I wanna do is just remove everything I can and give them a good scrubbing so the surface has got enough to bite onto those pads. So I'm just gonna clean one pad at a time here, just putting it on the bed of the shop towel. I've got my sort of protective nitrile rubber gloves on, both to stop oil from my hands going to the pads and of course to stop the solvent in the cleaners doing anything to my skin. So make sure you do this in somewhere well ventilated because this is not the sort of stuff you want to be inhaling too much. Um, if any doubt, use a sort of a dust mask or even something like a pair of goggles. Now this stuff does evaporate really well, so you want to make sure you give them a good wipe down with the towel. You can see there's residue already coming off these pads. I'm actually going to clean both sides just to make sure that there is in the best condition possible. Really want to make these feel like they're a brand new set of brake pads. Now the brake cleaner does evaporate, so once you've cleaned one and you're happy with that, just set it aside and then put a bit more shop towel on top of the pile here. And we'll go again with the next one. Your next step is to get the pads onto the block here with the sandpaper already in place and give them a good rubbing down. Just want to make sure you've, there's no chance of any of that residue still being on there. And of course, by doing this, and we're going to do the same to the disc rotors, it creates a surface that's going to mat really well together. And you can be able to bed in your brakes and rotors and they'll work perfectly. So I'm happy with that. That's been cleaned properly and I've just scrubbed it back down again on the sandpaper block there. I'm just going to give this a final clean and then set that one aside for reinstallation. Of course, I have to do exactly the same process on the other one. Okay, so both pads have been cleaned properly using the disc brake cleaner and I've scrubbed them down on the sanding block. Just want to make sure that any of that sort of pad material that's come off on the sanding block is just removed. I'm just going to give them a final clean and then just set them aside just so they can completely dry out. Okay, so same principle with the disc rotor itself. Give it a good dowsing with the spray, work your way around it, and you're trying to take off any residue you can. You might need a fair bit of spray just to make sure this is done. And then flip it over, do the same on the other side. So with a fresh bit of paper on the block, work your way around the whole disc rotor braking surface, and you just want to sort of roughen this up. And the idea is that that will mate really well with a roughened up brake pad surface and you'll get that good residue transfer. So note on the first side of this rotor here, it's cleaned and it's quite shiny, but it's not been roughened up yet. So notice that this, the braking surface is quite shiny and almost polished looking. What you want to do is roughen it up so it actually looks like this side here that I've roughened up. And you'll notice that the shininess is gone. It's very much sort of a, a satin matte finish on there and it's quite rough to the touch. That is exactly what you're looking for because that mimics what a brand new disc brake rotor feels like. So there you go. So I've restored the braking surfaces on both the disc brake pads and of course the rotor itself on both sides. So all I need to do is reverse the process of removing them from the bike to put them back on and then I want to head out and bed them in properly. So hopefully this has been useful for you. And if you want to find out how to actually bed those brake pads in, click right down here. That's a perfect video for you. And if you want to find out about the vibration damper that I was talking about on G. Atherton's bike, check right down here for the pro bike on his bike. Of course, make sure you click on the globe to subscribe. Brand new content coming at you every single day. And of course, if this video has been helpful for you, give us a thumbs up.